already show you what I'm going to I'm going to achieve. Okay, basically I will show all the IPC problem implementation. Uh, basically, I just need to show how to implement up down. Then you know how to implement all things. Okay, but the model itself is not easy to understand because when Fred come with process, we always has this uh, analogy. The analogy is Fred's I like spaghetti, process I like meatball. Okay, they mix together in the plane, okay, and actually you eat it very, feel that it's very delicious, but it's very hard to separate from one and between one another. Okay, so uh, this is the problem, and why my thing sucks here? It won't, it won't listen to my command. Oh, okay, so uh, I do have a picture here to describe in the entire case, okay. Okay, so this picture is very ugly. So why, why I say it's very ugly? Of course, the framing itself is actually happened all inside one process. So what's the meaning? You can see there is a user space program. Okay, the layout, we have memory, the uh, code, the global variable, the malloc. Okay, so the malloc is here. And there is a fact one fact two, what are they? Actually, when you run the thread, Fred usually is talking about a function. So you want to start a function, but that function has a, a support, okay, a support of a process, that function. I mean, the function can call other functions, no, no problem, okay? But they are functions. So when you talk about functions, I don't know whether you have learned it or not. Functions is actually a containing a bunch of local variables, right? The local variables, we call it a group of Stack variable, okay, or the stack, okay. So they actually has, okay, this illusion that they have separate separate stack. Each of them has their own copies of data, but for others, global, dynamic, the code, okay, they are all shared. You have two guys running together, but share something. Something are not shared. So how can you write this kind of program? Now basically, I will talk about the need first, why you need it, okay? And also, why I highlight the scheduler here, okay? Well, scheduler is very important in this in this uh, threading problem, okay? Because why? When the scheduler knows that there are threads inside this OS world, okay? This is a world of, uh, let's say, you're running Windows or we're running Mac, okay? They have different scheduler, they have their own world. Where they know there exists a thread is very important. Why is that? If that scheduler knows that there is a thread, so let's say I give her 10 millisecond, okay? 10 millisecond for a process. So if I know that there is a thread, maybe we can tune the processor, I'm oh, sorry, tune the scheduler to give 10 millisecond to the thread one and 10 millisecond to thread two. But the scheduler don't know there exists a thread inside the process then that process may only get one, one scheduler uh, choice that is always 10 milliseconds. Okay, we cannot tune, we cannot give fair share to these two threads running together. Okay, so this is the problem. And that's why we have some very old scheduler don't know about threads. Okay, very old means uh, your Unix. When you're using Unix in your IE department, in CS department, they deploy Unix system running on Spark machine. They sucks. They don't know what is running. Okay, and they create a lot of problems. Nowadays, uh, Mac OS 10, Windows, Linux, they all knows about threads inside the scheduler level. So the scheduler knows, so they will receive more resources. They receive fair control and more. Okay, and also some other languages like uh, some languages you may have uh, seen like uh, Python. JavaScript, a uh, JavaScript don't have threads, sorry. Uh, what else? Uh, Python, Ruby, uh, even Java itself. They don't have threads because they are running on top of a virtual machine. And that virtual machine emulates that running of the program. So whether it's a have thread or not, it depends on their virtual machine. They don't I will just explain to you. Okay? So that's why this topic is actually 
and closing the entire all previous five topics together, as well as some of your experience in writing program. Okay, so how many of you have written JavaScript? No, no one. Okay, so uh, how about Java? Okay, so Java, what is the thread? Do you know? Have, have, have you heard of the in, implement runnable? Extend threads? No, never heard of. If you did you heard of these two guys? No, okay. I don't talk about Java, okay, although I know how to write it, okay. So uh, maybe I can uh, download one or two simple Java examples to you guys in order to understand, that, hey, there is a way to write thread in Java, and there is another way to write thread in Linux, okay. And maybe in Visual Studio, there is another way, okay, but the concept are the same. First of all, the introduction. What is the same concept? The same concept is all memory are shared. The code the global variable, the dynamically allocated memory are all shared, except you have your own share of stack or local variables. Okay? So why why the remote control to this sucks? Okay? Uh, it's not obeying my order. So uh, some of the threads uh, are hidden, okay? You cannot see it. So what, what I'm talking about. Let's take a look here, okay? So this is the uh, what we call activity monitor. Okay, so I zoom in, and you can see a lot of things here. You can only see processes. Okay, you can only see processes, all process hierarchically. Okay, then they just show you the processes. Wow, I have so many Chrome tapes up. Huh? Okay, so you cannot see any threadings inside this guy. Okay. But in Windows, there is a way to see threads. But today I don't have time to prepare for it. To see threads in Windows, okay, you can use this. Uh, still remember sys internals? Yeah, the first week uh, recommendation. So you can take a look at the process utilities. Okay, it's called a process explorer. Okay, so it actually allows you to. Uh, it don't tell you, okay, but I try. You can see for a particular process how many threads it has opened. Okay, but in Mac you cannot see it in the activity monitor. Of course, there are other ways to see it. No problem. But what are threads? Okay, so the threads is actually uh, some executing instance in with running in a parallel but within the world of a process. So let's say in a browser, okay? So in the browser, maybe you have a thread, okay? Why it choose uh, uh, Firefox, okay? There is a story. The story is uh, quite a number of years ago, okay? Uh, it depends on how old are you. Let me ask you a question, okay? Uh, how many of you are still using Firefox? Okay, so let me ask you, okay? You seem to be a, you know, of a senior year, okay? <laughs> Yeah, so when when is the first time you use Firefox? How many years ago? When I was when I was in high school. High school, good. So that means at least three or four or five years, okay? So let me ask you how many of how many of the crash that you face daily in using Firefox? I don't remember, but it's a lot. A lot, a lot of crashes, okay? So uh a lot of people will yeah, the girl here, did you face any crashes now? Yeah, very few, very few, okay? So it's a high school experience, a lot of crashes. Nowadays, very few crashes. So maybe you have you have uh, been misled to the to answer that, hey, it's because Firefox is an open source project, many people going to debug. The answer is no. The answer is another thing, okay? It's about threading and processes, okay? So let's take a look at, if I look at Firefox as a, multi-threaded program, okay? So what is going on in here? I assume that we have a tab, we have a tab. So the tab has this networking component, okay? So you have to read data from the network. And at the same time, I don't know why, the, you have to use the mouse, okay? Now why I say that you need other threads to do it, okay? You can imagine the cases like this. You write a C program, now you are writing a C program, right? You are calling, uh, scan F, but at the same time you want to call wait PID or wait. Can you do it at the same time? 
stand there and wait. Both are blocking call. One just looks call skill, call scan app, you cannot call wait. One just call wait, you cannot call scan app. Okay? Or in the case here, the networking is actually doing read system call. Okay, you're reading data from the from the network. Okay. Actually we can really use read system call to read data from the network. Okay. So you're reading data from the network and at the same time the GUI control is reading your keyboard as if it is calling scan app. Okay? So you're calling scan app and and all the scan from the network, both a blocking system call. How can it be unless they run in parallel? Unless they run in parallel. Just like you do a fork, okay? You do a fork, one is calling scan app over the network, one is calling scan I'm sorry, scan app very wrong. Scan app over the keyboard. And read over the network. They do it in parallel if you do a fork. But there is another problem with so many bugs in this course, okay? You do a fork here, but after you really get the data, how can you exchange the data between these two guys? Right? You get something from the keyboard so that uh, that is a URL input. So you want to fire the next network request so that you will have these two guys exchanging data. Okay? So you cannot do the exchanging data when you use fork unless you are using some shared memory. Okay, you use share memory, the GOI control, get the URL input from you, copy to the share buffer or share file, then the networking component will read the data from the share buffer. So people want to avoid this kind of trouble and use the branding model. The branding model, uh, go back to this slide, is an automatic model that each running entity, I call it one entity because it's not a lot of process, one entity just running entity one, one entity two, they're running in parallel, they have their own local variable, let's say you call scan app, you call read, okay, they both in parallel, and when you get the data, you can use the global variable and the amount of memory to do the exchange, okay? So I know your, your memory location, I know you're monitoring uh, this thread one, I know you're monitoring the global, global variable call uh, uh, variable one, Okay, and that global variable variable two is the thread two is monitoring. So I copy the data to you and find a way to notify you. Maybe you are calling down semaphore so that you wait for my notification to up to your semaphore to notify that, yeah, the memory is ready. Check it. Yeah, that's why I teach you semaphore. Okay, it's because it's a way to signal the other process from blocking or you can do other things in here we are teach I don't know, we not have okay we are going to teach another model but don't worry yeah? uh, also the thread flash player okay the flash player may be and also one more naughty guy okay that is doing a lot of things you know uh, and you're still using flash okay uh, Chrome is great okay Chrome is really uh, blocking out all the flash okay but if, if you're still using flash you know that the CPU is hot okay is burning the CPU, doing a lot of things. At the same time, rendering the GUI, taking the networking, all the things happen together. Okay? So, I want you to take a look at this program first. Okay? So, this program is already distributed to you in a GitHub repo. Okay. So, I use prefret to implement a game. Okay? So what is this game? It's a basic casino game, okay? So, you already know how to write it uh, since the first year of study, right? Uh, the game is very simple. I give three dice, okay? I show you three numbers. Uh, you tell me whether it's small, it's big, or they are all the same, okay? They are all the same, then you should say another thing, okay? Because casinos say that all three dice are the same, they take all, okay? So, there is a time limit Okay, there's a time limit for this kind of uh, inputs, okay? So if you don't input for a, a short duration, you'll get a timeout and another question will be generated. How can you write it? It seems that there is a countdown, countdown process running together with the process getting your inputs, right? While you're getting the input, you're calling scan app, you're blocked. How can you count the time? So I play in front of you so that you uh, you understand what I'm writing. 
Okay, so what is it? A bag. Uh, bag. Oh, yeah. So the life left only one. Okay, if I don't answer, okay. Come on, hey. Take, oh, okay. Time out. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have to. I have to play. Okay. Ah, yeah. Not big. Sorry. I'm wrong. Eleven. Uh, this ten. Ten is small. Ah, big. Yeah. If if I continue to answer more correct question, it will up upgrade my level. Big, big. Yeah. It's still level one. Ah, huh? small. Big, big. Wait. Yeah. Upgrade. Ah. Huh? Small. Big. Big. Uh, upgrade, upgrade. Big. Yes, become faster. Big. Well, very easy. Right? Small. Ah, yeah. Big. Small. Big. 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 Small. Okay, so I I keep it here and take a look. Uh, the timer is getting faster. Hey, come on, so slow. Yeah, as okay. Small. Okay, upgrade level three. Big, big, small, big. Okay, so at the same time, it's actually doing the countdown. How can I implement this game? You can think of yeah, yeah, time out. Okay, so you can think of there is a way to implement it. Let's use alarm, right? You know alarm now, okay? So you set up a now in alarm in the background, but it seems to be not possible. Take a look at what I'm implementing. If you are taking an alarm, then the alarm fire. How can I at the same time get things get out? Yeah, this it seems to be strange. Yeah, I, I have a, at the same time I get this get out. But you're telling me alarm that is coming. So when the alarm comes, how can I cancel this get out? So in in implementing this game using alarm, the outlook the, or the feel of this game will become different. Okay, only the feel. Okay, you can you can try to make it as close as my implementation. My implementation, you can take a look at the code, but later on, uh, I will show you because you don't know how to write the code. So what I'm doing is actually having the share buffer in a global variable. Okay. I set up a so-called so global variable shared object, and this shared object passing data from the keyboard to some calculation thread, or the we call it the brain of the game. Okay, brain of the game, and at the same time, and another thread. Another thread is very easy. They are just doing sleeping. Okay, sleeping, just sleep and then sleep and then sleep, or you can sleep and cure. If you find that the timeout is, I mean, how can I say? You enter a keyboard input before the timeout, then you can queue the countdown thread, and we create a new countdown thread so that the countdown thread once it's go to the end, it will notify the brain of the game that oh somebody has a has a problem. Okay, the time the timeout is rich, but you didn't give me anything. So the brain will determine whether I want to decrement your life or not. Okay, so this is the way to design a thing. Okay, but it is not done by Fog. Okay, because Fog cannot easily share anything. So in a model, okay, I, I cannot click on it. Okay, why I cannot click on it? Uh, maybe I we plug it again. Eh? Okay, so the model is actually look like this. The code is actually have two area. One area is just a simple things like the main function, uh, the function that the main will calling, and other area we give a special name to it. It's just a normal function, but I call it Fred function. Functions that is used by Fred, okay? And this is a very important point that most of the programming language in this world, they will all put a Fred inside a function. That function can call other function. You can call it recursion, no one cares, okay? But just put you inside the function, cannot go back to the main. Okay? So once you call it, you are in here. And the global variable is shared by the two threads. Dynamic also share. Okay, so they are all shared. And the local, they have their own range. I can only say the range. Okay? 
So that means, uh, approximately, I can give you an approximate number, every thread will have 8 megabyte, 8 megabyte for processing your own data. Okay, so as long as uh, you you have a small data, that's okay. But you uh, create a thread that uh, need many memory, better to call malloc. Okay, but malloc will eventually be shared. Now let's take a look at the simple programming. Okay, so the simple programming, I will contrast threading and process in terms of some of the things that you already know. Let's say the creation. You create a thread. How? Process is fork. Thread, there is a call called prefect creates. Okay? Uh, so, some people always miss the E at the end. Uh, there is a E. Uh, prefect create. Okay? And PID, there is a PID for each process. But within the process, there are a bunch of threads. How can I identify each thread? There is their own structure. This is a structure. It's called prefect underscore T. It will be given by this uh, create thread uh, of the thread. Next, we have. The get PID, whether you know that you are yourself, uh, who is your name, who is your ID, and here we return you the structure, exit, we have to exit, okay? So you can call prefect exit, then the prefect will die. Uh, what, by the way, what is the meaning of pre? Okay, I always say pre, but we forget to say what is uh, pre stand for. Pre is a standard, postfix, OS standards, postfix standard, okay? So it's called postfix fact. Wait. We also have a wage mechanism, okay? We call a prefect join, okay? So why is it called prefect join? Uh, usually when people talk about threading model, okay, they will draw something like this. They will say that, ah, this is your start of the program. And here, you determine uh, that you have to create a new thread, so you will create a new thread, and this is your original executing flow here, now you can consider that this is also a thread, okay? So this is what we call a single threaded program. Your single process program is single threaded. Then after some time, after some execution, that child thread decide that oh I have to die. So you have to join back to this point. So here the main main thread I also use I also use call the main because it starts with the main function. Right? The main thread will call the join there, the prefect join call to join this thread. So if this thread is running slow, when when you call it, you are still here. Then it just like the wait system call. I will wait for you, okay? But when the child thread already dies, okay, so this die, okay, here, it's already dies. So the prefect join. What it's doing is just collect its dead body, just like wait, okay? So last, you can queue someone, okay? Queue, I mean, remember, is queue is not really queuing someone, but sending signal, right? You will just queue to send signal. You can also send signal to a thread called prefect queue. Now we have the slot, okay? So what is this? I usually use different colors. Okay, it's not about a kernel or not kernel. Okay, it's all about application layer. So the application is having this prefect create. Okay, so when you create a thread, you will pass in several guys. Okay, at the level of this course, okay, I don't disclose to you what this guy is. Okay, if you want to know what this guy is, you have to find a book uh, from O'Valley. That book has a very very complete. Description over that guy. The now is the book is called Prefect Programming. Ah, oh, there's a PDF. Uh. Um, already. Oh, this guy. Yeah, this this book. Okay, look like this. I have a copy in my in my office. Okay. So you, this is what we call a uh, to customize the thread. Okay, to make it become a little bit different. Okay, but. We don't need it, okay? Well, what is the, by the way, what is the little bit different? Maybe you want to keep a particular thread to a particular core of your CPU. We call it prefect affinity, okay? Affinity, okay? The affiliation with a particular processor to a thread. You want to keep it so that, as if you want to have a customization of your parallel program, one thing on each thread, let's say you do it, you are 
system at four core. So you create four threads and set the affinity to all four different cores. Then you need to change this guy. Okay? Now what is a oh, sorry, I forgot this, okay? So this is a TID that you will receive later. Okay, so you will uh, use a pass by reference to get the value. Here is about changing the behavior of the thread. Here is the starting function of the thread. I mean starting function. Because inside the hello, you can call other functions like uh, you call pre-def, okay? You can call other things, but you cannot call exit. When you call exit, you will have a disaster. Do you know why? What's the definition of exit? The definition of exit is process termination. You call process termination from a thread, so you actually you kill all other threads. Okay? So you seldom call exit. You can call return, but it doesn't make any sense. You have to call prefect exit to terminate it. Okay. So one more. Okay, it's the argument. You can pass in argument from a thread, okay, the main thread, to your child thread. But this is the trick of having a prefect. Okay, prefect allows you to pass one argument only one argument only, and what is the meaning here? Maybe this is the first time, uh, how many of you know what is void asterisk? How many of you know? Only one. Okay, only <laughs> one. Okay, so this is what we call a generic pointer. Generic pointer, it means that a, a pointer to whatever type, okay? Uh, how many of you have used quick sort? Library call. Yeah, no, what happened to this class? You don't know what is quick stop, you don't know what is quick stop and you never call it. You implement yourself. Come on. <laughs> Who implement quick stop by yourself? <sighs> Come on. Okay. Yeah. So this no way. This is a quick shot implementation in I all. Oh, it's responsive, huh? Okay? So this is a quick thought, okay? The quick thought library call is coming from standard library, STDLIB. Okay, the one that you always include. Then you put an array, okay? Now, why I ask you whether you have call quick sort? If you have call quick sort, you have seen this. Or a void. Void, 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 Am I going to the wrong cast? It's the engineering cast, right? Okay, give me five minutes. Okay, if I cannot code in five minutes, then I fail this job. I fail the job as a programming lecturer. Okay? Uh, oh, I, I'm afraid now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my hands are not very good, huh? So, uh, uh, array, okay? So, let's have a... Five, okay. I don't want to code so many things. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So the quick sort first argument is the array itself. Okay. So the main page, main page tells you something more. Uh, it asks you for that. This don't count the five minutes, huh? Okay. Uh, the number of items as well as the item width. Okay. The item width. So. Then what, why is need the item width? Because I said that this is a void asterisk, it's generic. You can pass in the double, you can pass in the structure, okay? You can pass in a linked list, array of linked list, no problem, huh? You can still solve array of linked list, huh? Yeah, so that's why it's asking for the number of guys there and the size of it. So I will pass in five, five guys. Uh, size of it is in here. So the last argument, so what is the last argument? Now this thing is kind of, don't count, don't count. So the last argument is uh, another generic pointer, a set of generic pointers you can see. Uh, in, uh, there's is a series, uh, constant void, constant void. So what is this, okay? This is, when you're using quick sort, you need to pass in, we call a comparator. If you have write Java, you understand, you understand what I mean. Write Java, you set up a compare function to, to tell people how to compare one other with another. So here is 
I don't know what is the array you are passing in. I don't know how to compare it. Please tell me how to compare it. Okay. So it asks you for a compare function. Uh, the function name is just up to you. I, I love to call it compare. Okay. So the compare function has to follow the generic pointer. I call it in one. In two. Okay, so what is this function is about? It's, it's asking you whether in one is bigger than in two. Okay, it's, if in one is smaller than in two, you think it's smaller than in two, please return smaller than one. That's one and zero, sorry, negative number. If they are the same, return zero. If in one is bigger than in two, you think that is bigger, or you want to sort it in a later position, then return positive. Just just like swing compare, so I will do it. Uh, if uh, before I do it, if uh, this generic pointer, I have to cast it back. Okay, cast it back to a. Uh, make it become. Yeah, this is a pointer to pointer casting in one generic pointer. Cast it back to integer pointer. It's just doable. Okay. Yeah, this example is very important, huh? Because later on in the prefect, I will use the same tricks. Okay. And immediately dereference it. Why? <coughs> because it's actually using pointer to point to the array and give me two pointer from that array and tell me, hey, these two guys, where which one is bigger than another? You tell me. Okay? So I have to do this. Another is B. Oh yeah. Not beautiful. Huh? Mm. Yeah, I have a Okay, so after I have A and B, I have to return something, okay? So I will say if A is smaller than B, return minus 1. Else if A is equal to B, return 0. Else, return 1. Okay, so I have still have 3 minutes. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So after the sorting, I can print out... Um, the data now. Win Cindy uh, yeah. uh, array i return zero. Uh, yeah. No return zero. Yes, I want to print print a print f. This is the problem that always using a GUI, okay? It will give you auto completion. Okay. So this is the sorting program, and when I run, sort it. Okay. So, uh, why I show this program? This program show you a tricks that whenever a guy give you a generic pointer, that means that you can supply whatever things you want. Okay. You can take a photo or whatever. Maybe I send it to Facebook. No problem. Uh, yeah. They just spend five minutes to write it. You can change this data type. Let's say integer for the double. Then what you need is to say the size of in is not in now, it's double. And when you cast the constant's voice, that means the generic pointer. Originally, they don't know what is the type, okay? So in a comparative function, you define your type. So here, if I have an array of double, then I change this, these two guys, become a double, and follow the casting. This time it's cast to the double pointer, and dereference this pointer so that the dereferencing will give me a double. Now I change the program and you say, you tell me what, what is the result. You tell me. What if I do this? What if I do this? I dereference a void pointer. Then what is the result of the referencing of void pointer? Is it void? Yeah, integer pointer, you dereference it, is an integer. Void pointer, you reference it, is it void? Then this is void, that means what is it? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, let me compile it. See, it already gives you some error. Void value not ignore error. I don't know what it's talking about. Okay, uh, 
it's already give you a warning the referencing void pointer okay is a bug okay so that's why in the previous program the previous program I first before I do the referencing I cast it to integer pointer then with the referencing integer pointer then I got integer okay So oh, this is it. The way. The data structure course don't tell you about this? Oh, what the <laughs> It's supposed to be taught in data structure course, okay? All about a generic pointer, uh, how to use a space sorting, okay? Yeah, then tell you to implement the sorting, right? Ah, what happened? Okay, so I compiled it again. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So uh, this is it about today because we will face this again. See, I have a generic pointer, and then I cast it back to char. Now I cannot directly use it because it's a void pointer. So I have to cast it to char pointer in order to make it into a string. Okay, 